Welcome back into the studio. I have a super fun project that we are going to work on today. Just a little mini embroidery hoop inspired by this piece of paper that I found in one of my scrapbooking uh, paper pads um, just for a little kicks and giggles. And I have a very special offer for you to say thank you to all of my new subscribers over the past few months. I will be giving this one away. All you need to do is be a subscriber and go ahead and leave a comment on this video and you could win it. Here, let's go. Okay, so today I would like to do a very tiny craft, um, little embroidery project and I don't have a lot of time right now so I'm just going to do a tiny mini thing and I got this little mini embroidery hoop on Amazon. It came in a 40 pack I believe so you'd have lots of chances to try. Um, some of them were already broken. They come in a little kit like this. Um, with all the pieces that a few were broken which is great because I instantly dropped one of the screws when I opened this and I cannot find it so I am going to use this pieces and make a tiny tiny little embroidery so this is only the size see they're very hard to hold on to um, so you just need the tiniest scrap of fabric and I am going to use this little piece of art gallery that I've had that I think will wrap around. And I love it because it already has this um, like diamond, broken diamond print on it. And I think it will give me somewhere to set my stitch, which I'm just going to create it like in this little pocket and maybe ever so slightly over the sides of the lines that are already there. For color inspiration, since it's this navy with white, I am going to go with um, this golden color and an orange and maybe a blush and some green. And I am found that inspiration from scrap paper that I have from Simple Stories, Cozy Day Paper Pad, and I just love that color combination. So that is what I'm going to use to inspire me today and just going to do some really loose um, like daisies like they show here and maybe some little sprinkles as well I don't have that much room so maybe like a sprig and a daisy and another flower I don't know we'll see once we get going um, it may not work at all but I need my little embroidery needle and look I'm just gonna use I think a lot of the thread that's already in my very messy little needle book here uh, maybe I won't use bright white. Maybe I'll just use that gray since it's already there. Why overthink it, right? Anyway, I'll probably only need a couple stitches. Hopefully this will only take a few minutes because I have a bunch of other things that I actually need to be doing. But I don't know. I just felt like having a moment of play and I thought I would bring you along. So here we go. Okay, so like I said, I am just using up some scraps again on this. Um, I am priming my floss here with a little bit of wax and I am using my smallest embroidery needle that I have in my little um, messy needle case there and I'm just going to thread it up eventually and we are working with some very tiny bits and bobs today to make this miniature hoop and it's really fun um, it's kind of sad that some of them are broken but in another way it's kind of nice because you have extra parts and pieces um, if you accidentally mess some stuff up but I just have this little tiny scrap of old art gallery um, fabric I'm not sure what collection this is from it's from several years ago and I loved it so much I saved every little snip so you can see I'm down to just this tiny little triangle um, and I just can't bear to let it go without having it you know enjoy its life and I'm just doing the lazy daisy stitch here so that's just coming up through the back of the fabric always coming down right next to it and creating a loop and then catching that loop at the top and going down right behind your other stitch over top of your loop to hold it in place and I'm just going to go around in a rough circle here. The nice thing is it doesn't have to be 
perfect. Again, we are just doing this by hand. We're creating something artistic. We're having fun. Um, we're not aiming for perfection here. And I am being inspired by the loose kind of painterly daisies that are there in my inspiration piece of paper. So I'm just working my way around. I think I end up with six petals. You can do as many as you want. But I found out very quickly that this little um, canvas does not have very much room. So simple is best. So I would keep that in mind. And then I go back and fill in with just a stitch of the floss. Um, it's just two strands of floss. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. But um, I'm just filling them in. I wanted it to be a little bit bolder than what it looked like with the, the open loops. Sometimes you like the open loops. Um, and sometimes you need to have it a little bit more filled in. So I felt like they needed that extra stitch up the center to finish off my daisy. Very cute. And I'm just going to go underneath back here and create myself a little loop and then loop around again to pull for a knot and thread my tail underneath a couple of stitches just to keep it out of my way. And we're on to the next color. I kind of strayed from the olive green because I didn't really want that one for this i just went with like this um sort of what would you call that seafoam maybe color i'm not sure and i'm just doing a couple of back stitches here to create a stem and i think i put a couple of other stitches in very simply for little uh leaves oh i used the lazy daisy again to create these little leaves oh that's very cute um lovely it doesn't take very much when you're working with such a small canvas so i think that's kind of fun if you only have a few minutes and you just want to make something adorable and charming this was really a fast project i know i sped it up a little bit for you today but um really it did only take me like 20 or 30 minutes and that's because i fiddled around filming stuff too so I'm just checking to see how much room I have. And you can see it's it's basically full right now. But I am going to add some of these, um, you know, like this. What color would you call this? I don't know. Um, I believe it's like a, a cedar orange. I think that's what Kona would call it anyway, cedar orange. And I start out doing the Lazy Daisy stitch with these small orange flowers as well. But just due to the size of the piece, it starts to look, um, I don't know, like a blob, like a weird blob. And I think you'll see here in a second, I just, I'm looking at it and I'm not liking it. So I'm going to pick it out and start over. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using my tiny scissors and I'm snipping off what I did so I can get rid of the little blobby. And I use my fingernails to just rub those stitches out of the fabric. And I am going to re-thread and reevaluate what I'm doing. So don't be afraid to cut out what you're working on and start over. Um, there's, you know, we all have to edit and readjust. It's all about being nimble with your designs and your stitches and learning as you go what's going to work and what isn't going to work and so here I'm just doing a couple of like cross stitches with a line through the center so kind of like those miniature snowflakes um, or an asterisk if you will but I think it works better to just get the suggestion of a little flower without all the bulk because I do want my central daisy to stick out more and that, ugh. I didn't keep it neat enough on the back, so I had to trim that off. Um, yeah, I, do, I want the daisy to carry the bulk of the design. So these are just accent flowers. They don't need to be very big. I don't want them to stick out too much. Um, and again, I didn't like that stitch, so I'm picking that one out. And I'm going to go underneath of my X with my stitch here. You'll see in a second. Of course, I have to rethread. So underneath so as not to cover the other ones that I did there. It just seemed like it would sit better. 
and one more. So there's a little cluster of these three sort of cedar orange mini flowers off to the one side. And they're just the accent in this tiny little field cluster that we have. And I'm going to check again. I think when you're working with something so small, it's important not to overdo it. But you want to fill up your canvas as well. So I just kind of continually checked. I, I cut out a bunch of the times that I checked because I didn't think you needed to see every single time. But that's what happens when you don't keep your back neat. You're going to spend a lot of time picking things out of your way. But So I encourage you to slide your threads underneath of other threads so they're not constantly being annoying. Um, anyway, so then I'm adding just another little back stitch of this olive. This is where I worked in the olive this time in a, this little stitch for these sprigs. And I do add just one or two stitches off to the side for tiny little leaves. And otherwise, I'm just going to stitch down here. I'm doing it a little crooked, like everything's a little bit coming out from the center, um, but not totally, not completely, because it's a very loose little field of flowers here a tiny little curio of them and then I'm going to come up on the other side because I felt like it needed at this point a little balance so there's going to be I believe just one little tiny flower on this side too to balance it out so we've got the cluster of three on the one side and then we will end with the fourth flower on the opposite side just to balance that color around our little mini canvas here. So I had to re-thread and now I'm just going to finish up with that one accent flower. And that's it. Very simple and we're all full. We couldn't fit another stitch on here if we tried. except we've got to put the center in our flower. So I've found that gold. Luckily I had so many of the colors that went with this in my little discard pile of uncleaned out threads. So I just made a little very simple French knot there, um, come up through the back, wrap the thread around your needle a few times and go in with your cluster right next to the stitch where you came up. And then I'm just going to knot it off in the back. And we are ready to mount this guy. So I have my trusty glue gun. And I'm going to put a little glue on the um, smaller circle. So this came with two sizes of circles. There's a smaller and a larger. And the smaller one is the inside for your canvas, making it even more difficult to work with. And then I'm going around each side of the... Um, disc there with a little glue as well and smoothing the fabric around the edges. Sorry that I'm a little bit off center on the framing of that, but I think you get the idea. I'm trimming away all the excess of that fabric there and I'm going to tuck everything around so that it stays nicely in place and is out of the way. These would be like darling little gifts for friends. If you have like a book club or oh teacher gifts um i don't know what else you could do with these other than wearing them but um they're adorable i don't know if you could turn them into bookmarks somehow or that would be a little clunky i don't know anyway then it fits inside of the little hoop frame thing and i'm gonna glue that in place as well so a little hot glue on there you only have a couple seconds to set all of this, so that's a little tricky too because it's fiddly and small, but I think it came out pretty good. And I'm just holding it while the glue dries and sort of pinching in at the top, but I do think it's worth noting you need to be careful because they are a little delicate. And then I filled up with a tiny bit of um, cardboard, just a little square, to allow my disc that ends the back to have something to adhere to in the center to make it a little stronger and then I'm just holding everything in place and quite a bit of glue I went a little heavy-handed there at the top so I'm gonna have to pick that off at the end and then you use the little tiny screw and the little washers and you tighten it in together 
And I do believe I end up um, going to get a little jeweler's tool, a little tiny uh, pair of pliers to help me twist it even tighter because it was hard to use my fingers, but I must have cut that out. Anyway, you can see that it is quite darling. And then I'm just making a little cord for it. And if you enter to win, you it will come to you on this cord. I would get a cute little, um, like, antique gold looking chain and put it on but I don't have that to give away so it'll come on a cord you can just wear it like this or you can add it to something cuter I made it nice and long so it would fit easily over your head if you did want to keep the cord I would adjust it up a little higher and of course I had on the most patterned sweater of all time so you can't really see it <laughs> very well but it is quite darling and um, I will show it in a little bit more um, subtle sweater background there but I think it came out really cute and um, yeah here it is so I pulled it up a little higher so that it was a little more centered and flat on my chest but again you can adjust it to whatever works for you and it you take it home to enjoy it or you gift it to someone um, I don't know it's just like adorable and charming and it really didn't take very long so I hope that you found this to be inspirational um, if you're looking for just a few moments of quiet stitching to add to your day maybe a sweet little gift for yourself or someone else who enjoys just the little simple pleasures of life and appreciates some tiny hand stitch work it is quite charming again all you need to do to be entered to win is be a subscriber to the channel and i thank you very very much for watching and joining me week to week and leave me a little comment so that i can get your name onto my board and i will choose somebody shortly and then i will reach out to you uh, via a message so thank you so much again and um, be sure to like and subscribe for more and i hope that you are hard at work on your um, embroidery journal for 2024 i will be having my february installment coming up shortly so thank you so much and have a great day